on our last visit together, we took two objects and we joined them together and we discussed the concept of nodes and how we scale different drawings, how we convert an object off of the internet into a bitmap. In this one, we're going to actually discuss how we put letters inside there in case you want to put a name down underneath there. And this, it's not really difficult, but there's some steps you need to understand as we go through. First of all, if I look on this object now, it's a single object. I can pick it up and move it so I know that it's been unioned together. So, and I also know that it's been converted into nodes, which is really important in order to perform this on a plasma cutter. So what we're going to do, the next thing we're going to do is letter it. And I'm going to take hitting my letter tool and I'm going to outside the object so I can do it and see what I'm doing. I'm going to type something like But you can't see that. Well, why not? Well, it's too small. So let's change the font to a larger font. Let's go to a 300 font. Now, you can actually type that in there if you don't like it. Well, yeah, that works for me. It's big enough now. And I could go up. I just finished one where I did a 3,000 font. Uh, so you can put any font you want, even though there are only certain choices in here. Type it to where it's appropriate size for what you want. Now, if that's a little large, I'll come back there and I'll change it slightly smaller. But that's acceptable to me. Also, you can select your uh, font style that's up here, but you do need to select a font that's easily manipulated and the one that you like. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment for that. But if I put this over the top, I'll select it and I'll drag it over here. Hang on a second. I can't see that. Well, that's easy to, to uh, fix. You just change your color to white instead. But it only changes this section to white. So if I want to have that as part of this document, a couple of steps I've got to do. With that highlighted, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Path, and I'm going to Object to Path. And you remember from our last discussion, we talked about what happens down here. So if it doesn't happen down here, it doesn't happen. So if I change that Object to Path, I now have a group of eight objects. Well, they don't look like eight objects. Well, let's click off of it and click back on and see what it's done. Eight objects in one layer. Okay, no object selected. Okay, now I see. It's now finally got to decide that it's going to show me. Each of the letters is a different object. So now what I've got to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to... Whoops, I better click on it again. Click on the whole thing. Come on. If I highlight the whole thing, then I'm going to go up to object and I'm going to ungroup. Now you can see that it's ungrouped them. You can't see very well what it looks like until I get down here and then I go now each individual letter has been ungrouped. So now what I'm going to do in order to extract those letters out of that name plate I've got to take those then one letter at a time. I'm going to highlight it, hit my shift key, hit the background. So now I've got this one selected and that letter selected. And then I'm going to go uh, path. And I'm going to this time go difference instead. Now it is subtracted. In fact, you can actually see the lines of the image of the paper behind it. So we know that that has now been cut out, if you would, from that piece of metal, which is ultimately what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to just go through here. There is a faster way of doing it. If you hit your shift key and you have two of them highlighted, you can actually hit the control button and the minus, and it accomplishes the same thing, except it's much faster. So you end up going through shift, select, control, minus. Shift, connect, control, minus. And one at a time, it saves you actually time to do that, but you do have to kind of think ahead a little bit in order to do that. And if you don't like that, you can always do the shift, select both of them, and come back up here and go to path, difference. It's exactly the same thing. But I want you to notice something. If I hit my shift button, select again, when I go up here to path, difference, oh, it tells me right there. Oh, yeah, the control and the minus key. That's what we're selecting to create a difference. Now, if I've done that right, and I can actually see I have because I can now see the ghost of the back page, I should be able to select the image and now all of them drag with it. That means it's an entire unit selected. So, 
kind of to refresh your mind on what I did. First thing I did is I typed in the name. I went up and I converted the object to path. Then I took the objects and I ungrouped them. Let me go object to path, click there. And then object, I ungrouped them. And then one at a time, the letters, I selected the letter and the background. And then an object differenced them. Once I've got done now, this entire document is a single document. If you now save this document just like it is, and I'll do that, I'll save it as... It will give me a choice to save it as a Inkscape SVG. I can take that drawing. I'll simply call it Horse. Now you remember that the original name of the image was Horse, but now this got a different extension. It's an SVG file. If I save that to my desktop, I now have that. I can take it with my take it on a on a jump drive over to the Plasma machine, convert it into a DXF file, which will be our next option that we'll do and then we'll show you how to cut it. I could convert it to a DXF. If you go down to save as, it gives you a choice down here to save it as a DXF file right here. I just don't like to do that. I like to save them as an SVG so if I have to I can come back and modify them on this machine and a lot of times we end up with problems with scaling. If I save it here as a DXF and then take it to the plasma machine. So we're going to change it on the plasma machine to a DXF and then uh, ultimately convert it to a, a G-code file. All of those will be in subsequent videos.